Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe presented by Coop Aleworks. We're back, but we're not in our studio. That's because we are up at the Thunder's practice facility with two, yes, I said two very special guests, and that is the Thunder's newly acquired two-way players, Lindy Waters III and Olivier Saar. Guys, thank you so much for joining us fresh out of practice to be on our podcast. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah, still fresh in the practice gear. We're getting ready to take off to head to Denver. And these guys coming off a game last night in OKC, you know, nice little stretch of games here where you all have gotten tons of minutes. Just starting with you, Olivier, like what's this been like? You, you get signed to the two way contract and suddenly last night you're thrust in the game very early because of foul situation and, and you just keep yourself ready. Yeah. No, it is. It is a truly blessing. Truly blessed to be here, truly blessed to be in this position. Um, it's kind of the things that when you go undrafted, you really like, that's the dream. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to achieve. That's in the back of your head, but you're trying to take it day to day to not put pressure on yourself. But being in this position uh, after my first year is really amazing. Yeah, Lindy, I mean, you were playing in Enid professionally not long ago for you to be in this position you know just what is this what is this like for you to to have had that meteoric of a of a rise and change uh same way I explained it it's kind of like a dream uh not the dream I imagine but uh you know you can't really plan ahead uh you just take things day by day and wherever you end up all the hard work you put in is where you end up the crazy thing about the NBA is that things happen so fast. It is a whirlwind and you just got to be ready to go. Yeah. Lindy, I remember very specifically being in Philadelphia and mm. just a quick interview with Nick Gallo, quick photo shoot while we were in the hotel. Just what were the, what, what is that like moment like the 48 hours, 24 hours right after you find out you're going to be with this team and you've got to rock and roll? Man, everything's picked up so fast, uh, you know, from like my phone ringing off the charts, um, going on the, the plane, have, having to pack for like four or five days. Yeah. Uh, my first three NBA games, just a lot of things going on at once. So it was tough to kind of block all that out and f stay focused on the task at hand, which is winning a basketball game. But, um, you know, I enjoyed every second of it and I still am. Um, and I'm glad to be here. And Olivier, for you, you've only had five games with the Thunder, but Teo told us a really funny story. You, you called him what you, uh, the, <laughs> the night <laughs> that he found yeah. out that you were going to be on the two-way contract. Just what was that day for you? What was that night like for you? What was that conversation with Teo like? <laughs> no, that's funny you said that. No, that's crazy because uh, so I was on, the ten, on a couple of 10 days before. Mm -hmm. um, so when I heard the news, I was in Boston with my family and during the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I mean, unbelievable to share that with them. And I was like, uh, should I surprise Teo and just show up and not say anything? <laughs> But at the same time, I just couldn't hold it for myself. So I'm like, man, you know what? We've been like together for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know him since high school and even before that. So I'm like, you know what? Let me call him. And he was like, he couldn't believe it. He was like super happy. It was a great moment. And then we just, just kept talking about anything and everything. Yeah, tell us the story about that that friendship with Teo and and how long it goes back. And I mean, all the way now, you're you're playing professionally together. Yeah, no, it is. It's crazy. So. Our first national team selection, we were roommates. And I was 15. He was like, you know how he, super young. He was probably eight, <laughs> something like that. But he was like 12, I think, 13. And I was 15. And we were sharing rooms. I don't remember that, but he told me that. And it was just like seeing the, the, the path that we took. Like he stayed in France. I came to the mm -hmm. States. And... His development in mind and now today being together in the same team is just something that like for the people back home I'm sure it means a lot even for us it means a lot and on the day to day it just helps me honestly having somebody that like you're one of my best friends and one of my friends back home and being able to share that with him every day is just an unbelievable it's a dream come true he Correct. said he said you're you're good vibes. He said that, that was his description of you. Uh, I you paid know, him to say that. Though. You know, Teo, Teo is like so he's so stoic. You know, he's always mm -hmm. like he's very like low key, casual, whatever. One of my biggest goals every time we talk to him, we actually talked to him today, is to like try to get him to, to crack a little bit, Just like smile. crack his spot. So what what do you do to get Teo to like break character a little bit? See, I'm not. I mean, that's that's the tale that when he's by himself, but. He's a funny guy. Yeah. He's a great guy. I think uh, that's just that's just who he is at first sight. But he's a really like 
accessible guy that you could talk to. He's funny, good vibes. Yeah. But a great guy overall, yeah. Now, I, he was pretty, he showed a lot of emotion in the last game. He had a dunk. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, point yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, he did. It was amazing because we always talk about it. I'm like, bro, when you go to the rim, stop laying it up and get it. Like, <laughs> just, you go up, just duck it. And he had one, so I was really happy for him. Yeah, Tay doesn't dunk very often, so that was definitely something that, that yeah. stood out to all of yeah. us, for sure. The thing that's cool is, like, like even though you and Tao go back, like, Lindy, you got to know him this year playing with the Blue. Like, how much easier has this process been coming to the team, given the fact that, I think, besides Darius and Shea and you know, Mike, Mike Piscala, Derek mm-hmm. Favre, like, some of the, the longtime veterans, pretty much everybody that's in the rotation right now played for the Blue as well. Yeah, um, you know, that's definitely been a help. But, you know, playing with O, um, developing chemistry that way with Teo, Poku, V, like all those guys being out on the court together from the G League and now here at the NBA, it just makes it a lot easier to play with each other. Olivier said, like, he knows you're going to shoot the ball and what he's really like, and like, and that you're going to, and then you're going to make shots. But what, what you told us that you've seen is just like that continued growth in all the other aspects of the game. Um, what's that been like for you just trying to, to get all those other things into the game this season? Uh, you know, it's just been, you know, my number one goal is just to try to be the best basketball player I can be and having people like, Oh, and teammates around me that uh, have that same mindset, it just makes it a lot easier. How much easier also is it just knowing what the Thunder and the Blue, their connection is just so strong, right? You guys basically run the same set, same plays. So when Coach Dagnall calls something out in a Thunder practice, is it a relief that you're like, okay, I know what that is. I've, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. You know, I when I first got here, I was a little nervous. They sent me a clip of some plays. But then I started watching them. I was like, oh, we run all of these. Mm-hmm. I was like, I am, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so how do they how do they send you the plays? Like what do you you guys have like an app that you all use? What how does that work? Uh so we're put into like these pods with our assistant coaches, trainers, and uh weight coaches. And then the assistants will send us just like little clips on huddle and we can just click on it and it just pops up right on our phone real easy. Super easy. I mean, that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What has it been like too, just getting to know the new assistant coaches? I mean, you guys obviously work with them every single day now. What has that been like for you? Great. I mean, great, great guys. Like yeah. the continuity from the the blue is just everybody's making sure that you understand like what you need to do. You understand your role. They're making you like feel comfortable. If you have questions, whatever. Like they just really like open to help you. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Like it's just. You're making it really easy, so you're like, you just focused on what you need to do. Mm-hmm. You got confidence in what you do, and then you're just getting better. And Olivia, I'll ask this question for both of you. We've talked about the similarities. What's been kind of the biggest adjustment from the G League to NBA now? I mean, you had to go up against Domas Sabonis last <laughs> night. <laughs> like, that's not an easy cover. Just what have been some of the, the biggest adjustments for you, too? For me, it's physicality, yeah. I'll say. For, like, especially at the center position, Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, and I haven't even seen most of the most of the teams with with big guys, and uh, we're playing Denver tomorrow, so it's gonna be a, a great matchup. But it's I, like I look at it as like it's my first year. I'm definitely gonna make mistakes, mm-hmm. um, but I'm trying to learn on the go. Yeah, but not repeat the same mistakes for sure. Yeah, I was expected to see you with like a face mask or a black eye or something <laughs> after that elbow you took yeah. your face last night. I checked that my was teeth crazy. I'm like, no, everything's here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Lindy? Like you, I mean, the wing position is mm-hmm. has some of the toughest covers, and when those guys get you in space, it's like watch out. So mm-hmm. how, how have you tried to deal with that coming in? Definitely like physicality, uh, like just all across the board. Um, but the decision making has to be another step faster. Uh, but, you know, being out here with these guys and with the coaches, they watch film and uh, just talk you through things. And it just makes that decision making process even you know, quicker. I'm curious, too, because um, the Thunder has a track record of guys who have, you know, elevated from a two way position to a full time contract. Two of them are on the roster right now. Lou Dort, Aaron Wiggins. How much do you guys talk with them? Have they talked to you guys just about how to, you know, go about a two way contract? Um. I mean, just get in the gym and work, you know, keep your head down, mm-hmm. uh, stay humble and, you know, have humility in the process. But 
uh, you know, it's not going to come immediately. And, you know, it's day by day. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, whether it's with the Thunder or somewhere else, you know, you'll get to where you want to be mm -hmm. and put in the work. Nick, you know what stands out for, for me, just like in talking to these guys right now, is just the poise and, yeah. the, the you know, the maturity for, for a couple of guys who are new to the team, first of all, but also obviously pretty young as well. Just where does that come from for you guys? Lindy, I'll start with you. Obviously, you've had a, a pretty unique path to get here. Where does that, you know, maturity, confidence, and poise come from for you? I guess just those experiences from, like, college, um, teaching us, you know, going through media, uh, going through all types of experiences in basketball, um, just, you know, just being yourself, learning to mm -hmm. be myself. Um, that's just the biggest thing. Yeah. What about you, Olivia? I mean, you talked about yeah. being okay with making mistakes. And I imagine for, you know, a guy on a two-way contract, you want to be able to, like, go out there and do – be perfect every yeah. single time. Where does where does that come from? No, I mean, definitely. That's for sure. That's the mindset I'm trying to have, though. Like, uh -huh. let's not make mistakes about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to go out there and make mistakes. Of course. Uh, I'm really focused on doing the right thing and sometimes maybe too much. But at the same time, it is what it is. It's basketball. People scored. Like mm -hmm. it's not as one to zero or something like that. So we're definitely gonna make mistakes. But for me, I feel like it's kind of like Lindy experienced um, from before college, even just dealing with uh, injuries growing up. Didn't play high sc in high school that much because I was growing that much so fast mm -hmm. and all that. Um, being on the sideline, and you just embrace like day to day. Once like you get back to the court, you're like All right, yeah, like right now I'm playing basketball. That's just amazing. So let me just focus on that. And I think about yesterday or tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just locked in on right now what I can do. And it was that when I was on the sideline, just getting better at something that I could do, even not being on the court. It's, it's like the years in college at Kentucky, at Wake Forest, struggling, um, not winning as much, not going to the tournament. I never went to the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's, I should have taken that to, a, to like turn it to an advantage for me and not seeing that as a, like, it's restricting, like, oh, I didn't do this or that. It's more like, I got the chance not to do it, so I got the chance to experience losing, mm -hmm. and I know what it takes, and I know the, a bad locker room. I know, like, toxic tra yeah. traits mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that's stuff that I'm trying to avoid and go to the other direction because I've, I've been there, I experienced that, mm -hmm. and that's not something I want to do again. So I feel like that definitely helped me a lot, and I'm glad it helped. I'm glad it did, honestly. Well, it seems like this roster is filled with those high character type guys who I think about this season and Olivier, with your first taste of the NBA came during a really heightened time for the organization. It was a lot of players that were out due to health and safety mm -hmm. protocols and you were called up in that situation. Paris, I know you only got a, a, a glimpse of a normal NBA season, but the, her first year was the the, year the, 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 the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. So, yeah, but, but it just feels like from my vantage point, everything's just elevated in terms of seriousness in, in the NBA world because of COVID. And for you guys to step into the situation and deal with that in your very first taste, you know, Lindy, you're, you're back, you know, you're, you're at home in a normal setting, but you're also in a completely different world as well. Like what, what was that like trying to deal with coming in and getting up to speed on all the protocols and everything that you had to do testing every single day and you also have, have a job to do to be ready for NBA opposition at each night. I mean, the protocols and the COVID stuff and all that, unfortunately, it happened when, I mean, for me, I was in college. Yeah. So we had all that. Um, it was just like continuing to make sure you take care of yourself, get safe, be secure of, about what you, what you do, and uh, and then just, just be ready when once your name is called, like, like we talked about last night. It's just just being ready. If it's five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, you can't control that. I can't control that as the coach. And whatever his decision is, that's his decision. I'm gonna just do what I gotta do on the court. Yeah. That's that's my approach. At the same time, I mean, you guys are in your young twenties. I remember being that age. Like it it'd be hard not to wanna do your own thing, wanna you know, have those moments to be reckless or whatever. And you all everybody's been so responsible. Like what do you think that says about this group that, that hasn't been an issue. I mean, there have of course been guys that, that have gotten, but like there have been so many um, great examples of, of guys just like being a leader by doing the right thing, which is something that marks us all the time. Yeah, I think uh, everybody as a whole, like from the top down to the whole organization, holds themselves to a higher standard. 
um, whether that's on the court and off the court. And, you know, I just think that the Thunder organization is just so personable and they're, they're all about the people and they, they care about one another and they, they don't, uh, they don't try to bring you down in any type of way. They're always trying to build each other up. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, Thunder is going to go a long way with that. Yeah. One last thing that I want to ask you guys is you've been here for some time now. You've, you've got some time to get settled in and get to know everybody. Have you had your moment where you sit back and it's just like a moment that sticks with you. It's like, wow, I'm, I'm here now. I'm in, I am with the Thunder. I'm in the NBA. And w when did that moment happen for you? If it's happened yet? I mean, for me, it happened like once every, like once in a while, like I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Or I just look around. I'm like, yeah, like I had like on the phone with my brother, mm -hmm. uh, He's playing too, and uh, he wants to. He got the same. He got the same goals, and I'm trying to be like a good mentor for him. And I'm like, like that's crazy that last year, after like this summer summer league and not being drafted, to look back and realize that I'm really doing it. Like I'm like I'm playing 20 plus minutes mm -hmm. in the NBA game, cont contributing as be as best as I can in with the Thunder, and I'm like. That's why we talked about like our entire childhood and I'm really doing it. And it's easy to say like, yeah, I got a two way. I want that contract, like that guarantee mm -hmm. contract. Or I want more like you got to love yours. Like You got to love the moment that you everything that you put in the work, the sacrifices, like everything that that really made you come to that point. You got to like have some time to to like embrace it. You mm -hmm. can't just sit back all the time, but I feel like at some point, like you really got to look back and be like, yeah, I'm on the right track. Like appreciating the yeah. journey versus just keeping your eyes set yeah. on, you know, what's to come. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. Lindy, what about you? Have you had your your moment where you just sit and realize that you are here now? Yeah, I think uh, that first game at home when I hit that my first bucket mm -hmm. and then uh, I had that dunk right after and they called timeout. And I was just like, man, like my family's here. It's crazy. Uh, you know, I couldn't have scripted it any better. Mm -hmm. But like O said, it's easy to get lost in the process. It's easy, like coming in, working every day, and those you need to have those moments where you're sitting in the locker room, where uh, you're on the plane with the team, and you you find yourself like in the moment, like wow, like I really put all this work and sacrifice in away from my family and. Uh, away from all my friends and partying and all those things. And, you know, it, look what it got me, you know, and it just, uh, you take that in consideration and you're, you just be grateful for yeah. every, like for everything. But, uh, you know, is, is it, that first bucket, oh man, it was. I remember that. It, it, yeah, I, 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 I could all remember that one. It was, it was a dream, man. Thing, like, Lindy forced Greg Popovich to call time out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how amazing is that? Hall of Famer, guy's gonna end up with the most wins ever. Seriously. Yeah. I, I wanted a, a, one more question for each of you guys. Lindy, you were the very first person on the plane on that flight to, to Philadelphia. I remember walking on, we get there a little bit earlier than the players normally do, and I was like, I recognize that haircut. He's, <laughs> yeah, like, he's ready to rock and roll. How excited were you to like hop on that chartered flight to get to the nice hotel where we're up on like the 60th floor or whatever in Philadelphia? Like, yeah. you, know? Uh, you know, I was I was really excited. But then again, I was like, man, I'm not going to be late on my first <laughs> trip. Yeah. I don't wanna... a, that's actually a perpetual fear for all yes. of us. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I, be late. You know, yes. It's my first, it's my first trip. I'm not going to be late for anything. Like I'm going to be early, probably the first one. Cause I'm going to go so early, but, uh, you know, I was really excited. I was really excited. All right. And Olivier, what was the book that you had with you at the post game press conference? Great that's question. Like, uh, that's a, so that's the Dan Millman, I think. Yes, he was a gymnast at UC Berkeley, okay. um, Olympic champion or something. Um, but he talks about it's the the way of the peaceful warrior. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, like how you carry yourself, how you like how you bring your thoughts into like being positive or just being in the moment, uh, not being like delusional yeah. about like your fears and 
It's just it's just a great book. I read it before and I'm just reading it again. It just it just bring me in a good like frame of mind. So yeah. Cool. Big reader. Yeah. Was that in French or was it in English? That one was translated from English and French. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Just, okay. It makes me think less when I like read it French. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, I do both, but yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, Olivier, Lindy, it has been phenomenal getting to know you guys and talk to you guys. Very impressed with just uh, how present you are in this in this opportunity that you guys have, and we look forward to seeing all that you do out on the floor. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks you. for joining us, guys. All right, we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back right after this. Thanks, Matt. Coop L Works is the proud sponsor of Thunder Basketball Universe. Brewers of the fan favorites F5 IPA and 99 calorie ice chest IPA. You'll find those and many more Coop beers at retailers across Oklahoma. Learn more at CoopLWorks.com. Full disclosure, we had intended on bringing you a podcast last week after the All-Star break, but there was kind of a snowstorm in Oklahoma yeah. <laughs> City that put a little damper on all of our podcasting plans. But now that it is nice 65 and sunny here in Oklahoma City, we figured now would be a good time to debrief over all that happened throughout the All-Star break. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. I think Paris, number one, you've got to give us the breakdown of your very first All-Star weekend experience. I was so happy that you were able to get to go and experience all of that because as a veteran of those weekends, it's an amazing privilege to get to go and be a part of all of those types of festivities. So what'd you think? Okay. First and foremost, it was th the spectacle of it all was just mind blowing. The fact yeah. that Cleveland completely transformed into an all-star city. I mean, sides of buildings were just mm -hmm. plastered with posters of the all-stars and every hotel had, you know, just all-star decor and shops that you could buy all-star yeah. gear. That was incredible to me that the, all-Star just completely descended upon Cleveland. The only cities that I have seen that haven't completely been like shut down by All-Star festivities are New York and LA. That which because, sense, yes. because they just, <laughs> they kind of like take those things on the chin and move on. Right. But like every other city, New Orleans, Orlando, Houston, uh, Toronto, even yeah. like yeah. The, all of those cities that like when the NBA All-Star weekend comes, there's no way of not knowing about it when you're in the city. And I think it had a little bit of extra spark to it because it's Cleveland and, you know, LeBron James was a part of all of the festivities. So he brought a lot of extra, mm -hmm. you know, hoopla with him as well, being yeah. from Akron. And so that was, it was really special to see that element of it, just the spectacle of it all. But I mean, it was cold, it was snowy, <laughs> sometimes a little rainy over there in Cleveland in February. But the one thing I will say is that obviously this was Josh Giddy's very first All-Star Weekend experience. And seeing this from his perspective was even yeah. more special because he was going through the gauntlet. I mean, like he, he got to Cleveland and immediately had skills challenge practice. From there, he had time to take a quick shower and then go through the media circuit, just which is a gauntlet of interviews and photo shoots and, you know, videos and all of these sort of, you know, different media obligations. That took uh, probably two hours maybe. Right. And then after that, wake up early, go to, to Rising Stars practice. And so, but throughout it all, he didn't lose energy. He was still upbeat. He was still where his feet were, very present. I mean, that's a theme of this entire roster is just being yeah. so present and in the moment. But you could tell that he was soaking it all up and just enjoying the moment. Mark Dagnall said that he was really excited to see how Josh would like handle an experience mm -hmm. in that type of setting. And obviously, he just shows such great maturity yeah. all the time. Yeah. But, you know, Paris, I, I just one thing that I think about as you're talking about all of the different events and like... The invention of a jetpack would do wonders for, for people <laughs> in positions like ours when we yes, go to All-Star yes. Weekend because it would just be so nice just to like hop from locale oh, to loca goodness. locale because, uh, I, I mean, you're describing it. Josh has to be in one place and then mm -hmm. half an hour he's got to be in a different place and 30 minutes later he's got to be in another. And, and it's just a constant uh, in motion yes. that, that you're in. And that's part of the fun of it right. is just the hustle and bustle and sometimes you're like, not even sure who else is going to be there. Right. A lot of times there'll be other either rising stars or actual all-stars, um, guys that are in some of the skills or dunk competitions that happen to be at those same events that that these players are going to, and you won't know until you get yes. there. And the fans who are waiting around, they don't know either. Right. And so suddenly 
you know, a player will pop in and like, oh my gosh, it's so-and-so. And and so those are really exciting moments. Yeah. And I remember asking Josh about this specifically, just because of the hustle and bustle of it all. Mm -hmm. I was like, have you had a chance to just let this sink in and realize that you're 19 years old and you were part of All-Star Weekend? And he was like, it wasn't until I saw my Rising Stars jersey (laughs) hanging in my locker that I realized, wow. I'm actually, I I did it. I'm here. I made it. And for Josh, it was so interesting because I I kind of anticipated for him the the pomp and circumstance, just the grandeur, being on stage, the lights, all of that would have been the best part of All-Star Weekend. But for him, it was the fact that he got a chance to meet peers from across the league. Because you have to remember, like a lot of these young rookies probably went through very similar AAU circuits. A lot of them probably were college teammates as well. For a guy like Josh, who grew up in Australia, the other side of the country, is 19 years old, so way younger than the rookie class, and is just now getting to the United States and meeting a lot of these people for the first time. This was an awesome experience to get a chance to make some connections with guys like Cade Cunningham and Scotty Barnes and just his peers from across the league. And he said that was the best part of it all. Well, especially after the last two years of just COVID and right. not being able to be connected with people in general, like yeah. this is great to <laughs> to be able to just get fully immersed into mm-hmm. the NBA and feel some connection to your draft class for sure. So one last thing about this All-Star Weekend before before we move on, it was the 75th anniversary mm-hmm. of the NBA. So that added a little extra, a little sauce to it because the 75 best players of the NBA were there. Josh Giddey's Rising Stars coach was James Worthy, yeah. Hall of Famer in the NBA. So that added another element of just the 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 specialness of the atmosphere because Josh was now surrounded not just by his peers and, you know, those around the league, but also legends of the yes. league and some yeah. of the best players to ever play the game. Yeah, that's a that's a great point and that was what made the whole weekend even more special just mm-hmm. as an observer from afar was the, those connections that you were talking about with Josh and his his rookie classmates. Mm-hmm. Well, you saw those connections in the NBA brotherhood yeah. that have forged you know, bonds across time, mm-hmm. across decades, across generations. And so when you see players embracing one another from the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, that just, it was unbelievable to see the, the through line from the guys that really paved the way yeah. for the game and for equality of people in this country in terms of, you know, it's sports. And then all the way through to the superstars of the 90s and now to the people who are commenting on the game today in the mm-hmm. 2000s and 2020s, you know, so um, that, that was just so cool to see. And, and I know Josh soaked all of that up as well. All of it. Absolutely. And to your point of just like guys seeing each other, just the brotherhood of it all. You know, they had to set up that entire, you know, I don't know what you call apparatus (laughs) during the halftime of the all-star game because they announced all 75 players and they stood on this little stage center court. Well, they had to break that down right after halftime to get the rest of the game going. (laughs) Well, it took them a while because a lot of these guys were just like chatting it up and they're like, Hey guys, we have to kind of like break this down. (laughs) But they're like, no, like we haven't seen these guys in forever. These are our brothers. This is, this is a great time. And this is when else are we going to be all in one room? So you could tell that that, that was extra special yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. So you got a chance to catch up with Josh yes. and you had a really nice opportunity for a one-on-one interview. So let's take a listen to Paris chatting it up with Josh Giddy. The whole weekend, just sum it up in a, a sentence of how it made you feel and how you're feeling right now after going through it all. Yeah, um, I'd say, you know, it's a dream come true. That's probably the way to describe it. Um, as I said, it's, you know, every kid's dream to be in an all-star weekend and, um, it doesn't really sink in. It still hasn't that I'm out on the floor you know, doing things I've watched on TV for so many years. So um, blessing to be here, um, and it was a great weekend. And there's still going to be you know, two more good events tonight that I'm looking forward to. And this is obviously your second time here in Rocket Mortgage on All-Star Weekend. How did day two differ from day one in terms of how you were feeling coming into it? Yeah, I mean, day two is probably a bit more. The nerves are settled a bit more. You know, you kind of understand what's happening. Um, you got a feel for the environment, the crowd and stuff. So, um, you know, there wasn't many nerves coming into the skills challenge. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to prepare, but um, great group of guys. We had good chemistry from the start. So, um, you know, it's been unlucky to not come away with the win, but overall fun weekend. You didn't, your whole team didn't just go first. You went very, very first right off the top. Just what was that like for you? It's tough. I mean, going first, it's like you don't know what to expect. I mean, when you last, you get to watch everyone before you, you know, you can kind of pick up little things along the way. But 
um, yeah, going first is tough, but um, she's tried to get our team off to a good start as best I could. For you and just your family in general, just like what did this opportunity mean? You're 19 years old, and this is uh, the stage that you're on. Yeah, um, it means a lot, and I give a lot of credit to them for where I'm at today. Um, you know, they've made a lot of sacrifices for me to, you know, drive me around late nights, uh, early mornings, you know, cooking me food, washing my clothes, all that stuff. So for mum to be in the stands and my parent uh, my dad and sisters to be watching it from tv um you know they they deserve this just as much as i do so uh really happy the mom gets to be here for it and then just last thing for you you mentioned the opportunity that you got to build some camaraderie with some of your peers around the league just what was this like for you getting a chance to know them a little bit it was awesome i think that's for me the best part about this weekend is just you know the other rookies that we play against but you don't necessarily get to spend time with or hang out with. And I think this part, uh, you know, this weekend is a great opportunity to do that. I've, you know, Kate and Scotty, I'd had nothing to do with prior to this. And now, you know, we were cool straight from day one. So um, great place to meet guys, um, you know, make connections. So, um, you know, that, that's probably the best part for, for me. And you did great out there. I know you didn't get the results you yeah. wanted, but you did great out there. <laughs> Before we let you go on this podcast, we have to let you know what's on tap for the Thunder. Like we mentioned with Olivier and Lindy, this team is about to head to the plane. To, yeah. We're about to head to the plane to head out to Denver. The Thunder's last road trip for the next three games, really. So the Thunder faces Denver on Wednesday, then comes home and then plays on Friday. So that's going to be a city night inside of Paycom Center. You're going to have three chances to see this group before they head back out on the road, play again against Utah on Sunday, and then they kick off a home road back back-to-back on Tuesday, starting against Milwaukee on Tuesday, and then out to Minnesota on Wednesday. Yeah, so three uh, awesome opportunities back at Paycom Center after we get back from Denver, you know, division rivals, mm -hmm. and then the defending champs, so definitely don't want to miss that, and now that OKC is thawed out a little bit, you definitely got to <laughs> make your way down the highway or down the side streets or however you get to Paycom Center and come down and, and join us. And the Thunder has put up quite some really strong fights mm -hmm. out of the All-Star break. The Thunder's played three games, won a pretty dramatic game in Indiana against the Pacers in overtime. I don't know what it is against the Pacers this season. They just have to go into 53 minutes of action yes. to determine yep. a winner. But this time the Thunder came out on top. And then uh, last night against Sacramento, we're recording this on March 1st at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, I had to double check. It's March. And that game, the team went up against a, a guy like DeMontis Sambotis, who yep. is a monster down there in the paint. And so they've got some lessons that they can carry over, some really transferable kind of defensive tactics to go up against a guy like Nikola Jokic tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, and even coming right out of the All-Star break, you're going up against the defending Western Conference champions mm -hmm. in the Phoenix Suns. So those have been three very, very challenging tests. The, the Thunder attacked them each. I think what we saw against Phoenix was they had it for the first three quarters, and then yeah. that that expert know-how from the Suns, who are well-oiled machine, that kicked in in the fourth quarter. Obviously, as you mentioned in Indiana, the Thunder, they just gutted that one out, and they yeah. stuck with it. The offense was humming, led by Shea, who has now scored 30-plus in three straight games since mm -hmm. he's returned from that ankle injury, and he's been extremely efficient as well, up above 60% shooting over those three games. But he's also helped the Thunder's yes. engine go as a, as a whole. It's not just been a one-man show. He's been getting into offense quickly, and that ball has been zipping around to everybody. So that's what we saw in Indiana. And then Sacramento, that was a physical battle. There was a million fouls called in that game, tons mm -hmm. of and ones. And that was really – it It really ended up being kind of towards Sacramento's strengths. They lead the league in and ones. Right. They're in the top five in free throw attempts. So this is a team that – was able to make things on their terms, and they are like in a desperate chase for a, a play-in seed. Yeah. So they, you know, were had all of the 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 fight and energy and the thunder being shorthanded. They they tried to put up just as much of a fight, yeah. but didn't have quite enough in that second half. What was so interesting about that Sacramento game was while it did seem bogged down, especially in the first mm -hmm. half, by free throws and just nonstop trips to the free throw line. The second half felt like a track meet. Yes. We felt like I was watching a tennis match. We Guys were just going back and forth and back and forth. That's because Sacramento, when they're not at the free throw line, they want to play fast. They they are one among the league leaders in, in just pace of play. That's how the Thunder wants to play too. And so it was just really interesting to see that kind of you know dichotomy of 
This game's kind of slow because of the free throws, but also when it's, they're not at the free throw line, they're running back and forth. It's like those city drivers that go 50 miles an hour from stoplight to stoplight. You right. Know? It's like, <laughs> exactly. we're going to speed up just to stop right again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, like you mentioned, the Thunder has been undermanned in their past three games since the All-Star break, but these guys are getting after it and they are in every single game. It is quite the fight. And I will say it is fun to watch as well. So be sure to tune into Bally Sports Oklahoma to catch those games. And also come down to Paycom Center. Friday is going to be a city night, so you know it's going to be extra fun. Check out in your you know, white Dress and silver. Dress to impress, yeah. There you go. Exactly. So until then, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much to our special guests, Olivier and Lindy, and to our producer, Matt Bishop. And until next time, thunder up and catch you later.